So, you're in a band, you've written some songs, you have a ton of fun playing the songs, writing the songs, hanging out with your friends, just being in a band, but you have no idea where to begin when it comes to recording your band's music and making a demo or making an EP or something so that you can you know, post your music online or whatever you'd like to do with it. Well, you've clicked on the right video, my friends. In the next couple of minutes, I will do my very, very best to simply explain how to record your band's music. Now, you could just be like a solo artist and, you know, write your own music and record your own stuff, so obviously that applies too. Trust me, if you're in a band and you want to record your music, like, I have been there. I know what it's like to not know the first thing about recording your band's music. I was in a band throughout high school and that's all we wanted to do was record our music. We finally figured it out like my senior year, uh, almost 10 years ago. And even since then, things have changed so much that uh, it's, it's just so cheap and easy to record your music. This is gonna be a lot more simple than you think it's gonna be. So first things first, you're going to need a microphone. I would recommend getting a USB microphone such as the Blue Yeti. Uh, now, why would I recommend this? Well, USB microphones are nice because they plug right into the USB port of your computer or laptop and they don't require any other equipment. So they're way simple to use and you'll save a lot of money that way. You just plug it in and start recording. Also, USB microphones sound really good considering how inexpensive they are, but feel free to buy an audio interface, an XLR microphone, an XLR cable, uh, you know, go ahead and do that. It just typically costs a bit more and there's more things that you gotta figure out how to use. USB microphones are just more simple, but whatever, do what you want. Second, you'll need a microphone stand and you can just go on Amazon and spend $20 or go to a yard sale. It, you don't need to spend a whole lot of money on a microphone stand. Maybe down the road, get a nice expensive one, but for now, get a cheap one. It'll serve your purposes just fine. Now that you have your microphone and a microphone stand, there are two ways you could go about recording your band. First way is the easy way. Just set up the mic in the middle of the room and have everybody play the song at the same time. Uh, you know, as if you're just rehearsing the song or playing it live and capture the entire performance at once. But there's a better way called overdubbing. This is where you record each instrument one by one and play it all back at the same time to make it sound like it was recorded at the same time. This way you get a great sound of each individual instrument instead of one mic recording everything at once and blending together like a muddy mess. And this is how real recording studios do it. And it's actually quite simple to do. You just need some recording software. And assuming you're on a budget, I'm going to recommend a free recording software that you can download called Audacity. You can use it very easily and it will get the job done. And later on, feel free to buy some better software, but for now, this program will do just fine. It will do everything that you want to do at this stage. It'll let you record your tracks and will automatically line up your tracks. So when you play the song, the recordings all play at the same time, even though you recorded them at separate times. So go to Audacity Team org and download audacity i've also put a link in the description now you need to plug your microphone into your computer and use it in audacity this is simple as well just plug your microphone into your computer every recording program will have a preferences tab that you go to to uh, select your microphone as the input device once you've plugged it in input device means the thing that you're plugging in to your computer to record uh, also, you want to make sure that the output is set to whatever it is that you're plugging your headphones into, which is likely just the sound card on your laptop or your PC. This way you can listen to your song on headphones while you record, so you can hear all the stuff that you've already recorded and play your instrument to that stuff that's already recorded. Now, it might sound intimidating to record your song piece by piece or instrument by instrument. After all, you've probably never done it that way. You're used to playing the song with your whole band at the same time. So in order to record it piece by piece, you'll want to nail down exactly what tempo or how many beats per minute you want the song to be. I know what it's like to just, uh, you know, write a song with a band and you kind of just pick a tempo and you don't necessarily think about what the tempo is. You just, yeah, the song's kind of faster, it's kind of slow, and whenever you rehearse it, it's not exactly the same. But if you're gonna record instruments piece by piece, you're gonna wanna nail down exactly what the tempo is so that from the get-go, you can all be recording it to that exact tempo so that when you play all the tracks back at the same time, they're lined up and it sounds good. So the easiest way to find out what the tempo is of your song is to just go to a website like a.bestmetronome.com 
or download a metronome app on your phone. There are like tons of free ones. Just tap the rhythm of the song and the website or the app will tell you what the tempo is. This is the tempo that you want to set in Audacity so that everyone plays in time with each other when they start to record their individual parts and the song sounds cohesive and in time. Once you've figured out the tempo, go to the Generate tab at the top of the screen and select Click Track. Then enter the tempo here. Then extend the amount of bars to something like 200, I don't know. Th this will give you about eight minutes worth of that particular tempo, which should be plenty of time for your songs, but if your song happens to be longer than eight minutes, then you can go ahead and make it uh, 300 bars or whatever, just make it as long as you want. So now that you have your tempo track, you are finally ready to record. The fourth and final thing you'll need are some headphones, uh, preferably over-ear headphones that go over your ears to help you hear the metronome better while you play your loud instruments. So now the question is, uh, what instrument do you record first? If you have drums in the song, then you should record them first because they carry the beat and it's much easier to record the rest of the instruments once you have the drums. If you don't have drums in the song, perhaps start with the, the bass guitar because the bass, kind of like the drums, is also the backbone of the song. And if your song doesn't have bass, then start with whatever you consider to be the main instrument, like the acoustic guitar or the piano or the piccolo or the oboe or the accordion or whatever. So to record, set the mic up near the drums, put your headphones on, and press the big red record button. Your recording software will start recording whatever the microphone hears, all while playing the sound of the metronome in your headphones so you can follow along to the beat and record on time. If you're recording a loud instrument, you'll want to turn down the input volumes on your recording software and on your computer. This will help make sure you don't get any microphone clipping or distortion, which can tend to happen if you're recording something really loud or if the microphone is too close to the source of what you're recording. Now, if your drummer doesn't have the song memorized or it's just too hard for the drummer to play the whole song while only listening to a click track, uh, which I understand that, I mean, I get it, that can be kind of tough. The drummer's probably used to rehearsing the song with everybody playing, so it is kind of weird to just sit there and listen to a beep, 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 and just play the whole song. It's weird. So try recording another instrument first, like the guitar. Uh, it makes it easier for the drummer to know what's going on if there's a click track and, say, a guitar going on in the background. There's no right or wrong. You don't always have to do the drums first, so keep that in mind. Once you have the drums recorded, press stop and move on to the next instrument. Set up the mic next to the instrument or the singer that you want to record, then press record again, and Audacity or whatever program you're using will now be playing back not only the metronome sound, but the drum track that you just recorded as well. Pretty sweet. Proceed to record every instrument until you're done with the song. Now I should mention that wherever you put the microphone, relative to where the instrument is actually makes a really big difference in the way that the recording sounds. So if you put the microphone close to, say, an acoustic guitar or put it far away, it's going to really change the way that it sounds. So just keep that in mind. I don't have time in this video to like go over ideal mic placement for every single instrument ever. So just know that it's important. Oh, and while we're here, you can use these little volume knobs to increase or decrease the volume of each track in case one isn't loud enough as you record. For example, if you're trying to record vocals, but the guitar is too quiet, the singer might have a hard time knowing which notes to sing, uh, so just turn up the guitar track. Simple. So now that you're done recording, you can, uh, you know, balance the volumes of all the tracks. You can pan the instruments left and right, which means you can have some instruments come out of the left speaker or some come out of the right speaker. Then click on File, Export, and you can export the song as a WAV file or an MP3. And voila, upload it to the internet and you have just recorded a song, my friends. So once you actually sit down and start recording stuff, I'm sure you're going to have a lot more questions. So do yourself a favor, leave a comment on this video with any questions that you have. Uh, my subscribers know best. I do my very best to respond to every relevant comment on my channel, uh, especially questions about stuff. So let me know, I'm happy to help you guys out, help you through this process. And for your own sake, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and check out some of my other videos. My channel is all about simplified explanations of how to record music and this whole other world out there called mixing music, 
which uh, if you really want to step up your game once you've learned how to record a song, there are a lot of things that you can do to a song to actually make it sound better once you've recorded it. And anyways, I wish you all the best um, in your music recording endeavors, and I will see you on another video.